Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA at 8 a.m., San Antonio police searching for the driver who sent a man to the hospital overnight. Details from witnesses on the scene. Plus, the election season is over, as far is not far from over, and we have a lot of questions about how both the Republican and Democrat parties prepared for this year. We'll be talking to both sides live in our leading essay segment. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 66 degrees, but as we take a live look, not much to look at. Not great conditions to start your Sunday morning. What is the rest of the day? What is the weekend? What does the work week look like? Our Sarah Spivey joins us in just a few moments. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, November 8th. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. Yesterday, if you were awake at this time, it was a beautiful day and it's kind of looking Yucky out there, Sarah Spivey. Dreary. Well, yeah, I think dreary is a good word. A little gray. We are seeing some morning clouds, and these clouds are going to be stubborn. They're going to hang around a bit. My camera's glitching. Our live camera's glitching, but I do see some sprinkles out there uh, at the moment, and it's 66 cloudy degrees outside. 67 in Hondo, 62 in Kerrville, 67 in New Braunfels, 67 in Gonzales, and in Ple Pleasanton, 66 in Uvalde, 64 in Creaseau Springs. Already 70 degrees in Del Rio and like I mentioned it's cloudy and in fact visibilities are lower in some places visibility down to six miles in New Braunfels and Gonzalez down to five miles as well in Pleasanton and so low visibility in some places here in San Antonio we're not really dealing with fog but we are dealing with those low clouds these clouds are going to be stubborn and they're going to keep our temperatures down a little bit we'll be looking at a high temperature only near 77 degrees and that's, of course, because, again, we're starting off with the clouds. So it is going to be a good day to go for a walk. You're not going to have to worry about rain, even though we desperately need rain. Maybe you're going to take the dog for a walk. Fido's forecast looks like he's got the green paw all day long because we are going to see a little bit of sun in the afternoon, but that's going to still not do too much to warm us up again 77 for the high temperature i do have an update on a cool front arriving this week i'll show you what that means for our weather here in san antonio and what it means for veterans day coming up in just a bit max thank you sarah new this morning a man is in serious condition in the hospital after san antonio police say that he was hit by a vehicle overnight take a look this was a scene just after 1 a.m Police on the scene telling us that it was a 54 year old who was walking along the westbound side of Austin Highway near Parham Bidal. That's when the driver veered off the road and hit the man. Witnesses on the scene told police that he was thrown 10 to 15 feet in the air. The driver responsible for the crash took off. Police still searching for them this morning. The only description that investigators have right now is that it is a vehicle with a broken side mirror. Also new this morning, people in an apartment complex were evacuated late last night after smoke was seen coming out of one of the units. Fire crews say it happened around 1045 last night in the 1700 block of South Hamilton Avenue. They say an electrical short from the microwave started in the kitchen. Fortunately, they were able to contain the fire quickly and no one was injured. Damages are estimate, estimated to be about $2,000. A United Nation. That is the goal for President-elect Joe Biden. He addressed the nation for the first time yesterday evening after winning the 2020 presidential race. Biden took the stage before a hometown crowd in Wilmington, Delaware last night, pledging to unify the country. With a driving crowd of his supporters at the Chase Center, he also asked Republicans to give him a chance. He says he wants to make progress and that we must stop treating our opponents as the enemy. And he also stressed the importance of healing divisions here in our country. A time to build, a time to reap, and a time to sow, and a time to heal. This is the time to heal in America. Of the many tasks on his to-do list, the president-elect is expected to announce his own coronavirus task force. Excitement and love for Vice President-elect Kamala Harris exploded in the Alamo City after the big announcement yesterday. People from all cultures and backgrounds say they are truly thankful and inspired having the first black South Asian American woman represent them in the White House. She's breaking open a path for new people of color and women. And having that cross-cultural background leads her to allows her to be sensitive to the different needs of the population. And also I think this will help us to come together, uh, build this great, stronger America for our future generation and fulfill their true American dream. 
The overall hope for most people is that despite who you are, we all should stand united together for a greater future of the United States of America. And on the other side of the aisle, a relatively quiet day from President Donald Trump's camp. President Trump did take to Twitter a few times, claiming that he won the presidency and went on to allege voter fraud. Now, many of these tweets had been flagged by Twitter due to their inaccuracy. The Trump campaign did release a statement, though. In part, it reads, quote, Joe Biden has not been certified as the winner of any states, let alone any of the highly contested states headed for mandatory recounts or states where our campaign has valid and legitimate legal challenges that could determine the ultimate victor, end quote. Now, concerning any litigation related to this election process, Another statement reads in part, beginning Monday, our campaign will start prosecuting our case in court to ensure election laws are fully upheld and the rightful winner is seated. The American people are entitled to an honest election, end quote. Well, turning now to the several close races, including two in Georgia and one in North Carolina, those races helping to determine the balance of power in the U.S. So far, Republicans retain control of 48 seats, while Democrats have gained one and remain at 46. 51 is needed to win. And in the U.S. House of Representatives, it is projected that Democrats will retain control, but Republicans have gained five seats so far during this election. Current Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, has already announced her bid to run for Speaker once again amid her shrinking majority. Well, on the heels of Joe Biden being named president-elect, we are taking a step back, taking a look at how the election went here in Texas. Both parties went into the election cycle with big goals. Some achieved them, others not so much. Throughout this morning, we plan to speak with the chairman of both state parties. To start in today's leading essay segment, the Republican Party of Texas State Chairman Alan West joins us live. Good morning, Chairman West. We have a lot to talk about this morning, so let's just go ahead and dive in. First and foremost, thank you so much for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So we would be remiss if we didn't bring up the big decision that came out yesterday. Joe Biden named the winner of the Electoral College votes and thus the projected winner, the president elect. So what is your immediate reaction? Well, you still have the, the three C's that are going on. You still have some states that are counting. You still have to have a canvassing of the uh, votes and of the ballots. And then you still have to have a certification. So I think that we still have some more of that process to go on. And as the president's statement did say, that uh, there are going to be triggered mandatory recounts. Possibly Georgia as well. So I don't think that we are at that point, but understand that some people want to preliminarily uh, award it to Vice President Biden, but yet we need our democratic process to play out. So say if it does get to that a point officially, do you feel that senior members of your party should encourage a peaceful transfer of power? Well, I don't think you have a problem with the Republicans with a peaceful transfer of power. The peaceful transfer of power, we've been fighting that since the 2016 election from the Democrat Party side. So uh, Republicans have never stood in the way of a peaceful transition of power in the United States of America, ever. Do you feel, though, however, that if that a, tre a peaceful transfer of power, Chairman, does not happen, that it could damage the reputation of the Repar Republican Party going in the future? Well, once again, you're making an assessment based upon hyperbole and conjecture. The only people that are standing in the way of a peaceful transfer of power, like I said, you look at Antifa, Black Lives Matter, you look at some of the uh, spray painting on uh, buildings in uh, the capital city of Texas, Austin, which talked about. I haven't seen any Republican organization, I haven't seen any Republicans whatsoever taken to the streets and promoting violence. Last question in regards to the, the presidency. Now say all of this does go through, you say a lot of the, the president-elect statement is based on conjecture. Say the lawsuits go through, everything is countered, everything is legitimized. Do you ask President Trump to go to the inauguration, stand hand in hand, and kind of submit to that peaceful transition of power? Well, I'm not going to ask President Trump to do anything. My responsibility is here in Texas and to make sure that the uh, policy agenda for the Republican Party of Texas is promoted in the next legislative session. That's the most important thing for me. Everything will play out with the national level uh, of politics, but all of this talk about President Trump not stepping down and things of that nature, we know that there were a lot of issues that came out of the Obama-Biden 
transition of power to the Trump administration is still remain unanswered. Perfect. All right. Well, Chairman West, you said it. Texas is kind of your purview. So let's go into the how Texas went throughout this election cycle. You know, when we went into it, there was a lot of conjecture that Texas could turn blue. You know, the Democratic Party had lofty goals trying to turn the Texas House, trying to turn a bunch of seats, a bunch of districts. Did that ever come to your mind that Texas could go blue? Absolutely not, because when you look at the policies being promoted by the Democrat Party, they are policies that are not beneficial to the great state of Texas. As a matter of fact, when you had Vice President Biden in the presidential debate talk about transitioning from oil and gas, and you know that Kamala Harris, Senator Harris, is a co-sponsor of the Green New Deal. That does not work well for the Texas economy, nor for our oil and gas industry, which has made America energy independent and a net export of energy resources. The number one exporter of liquefied natural gas in the world is Port Arthur, Texas. But also, you have to understand that Texas is a leader in the nation in wind energy, but you cannot push wind energy through into the system unless you have natural gas. So hopefully uh, people will come to their senses and understand that we need to have a strong oil and gas industry coming out of Texas. All right, Chairman, we are running out of time. One last quick question for us, just sum it up in a few seconds. What does the future of Texas and Texas politics look like from your perspective? I think Texas will continue to be a very strong conservative red state. I think we proved that. The Democrats wasted $53 million and got no major electoral gains whatsoever. All right, Chairman, thank you so much for your time this morning. My pleasure. Thank you. And like we talked about earlier, we will have the chairman of the Democratic Party coming up at about 8.30. Time now, 8.11, 66 degrees out. Well, enjoying a cup of joe on this beautiful Sunday morning. Just ahead, some fun facts about National Cappuccino Day. He's making his list, checking it twice, and Santa is already in town. After the break, stick with us. We're going to be live from Santa's Wonderland at the Bass Pro Shops, and you're probably asking yourself, will I be able to sit on Santa's lap? We have that answer and more just ahead. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 66 degrees, not starting to feel like Christmas. We'll check in with Sarah Spivey right after the break. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. Christmas tree came up at my apartment complex this morning. Very excited, posted about it on Instagram. It's up, it's lit, literally and metaphorically. It's <laughs> beginning to look a lot like Christmas here. Santa's coming to town today, here at noon in San Antonio. We're supposed to sing those. Santa's. I don't sing. We've I, established. We I don't, you and Sarah, you are the great tandem here. Oh. I just smile and wave. All right, Max. Well, the Christmas celebrations are kicking off at Santa's Wonderland at Bass Pro Shops, but kids and even some adults want to know how their visit with Santa will, what it will look like because we're in a pandemic. That's right. Elisa Barrera, join us live from one of San Antonio's most popular free Christmas experiences with more on the exchanges that families can expect. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, yes, Santa Claus is in town. Oh, Santa, are you here? Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, San Antonio. It's a Merry Christmas at Bass Pro Shop. Y'all come see me. Santa is ready to see the kiddos, the families, but to tell us more, Anna White, she's a special events coordinator here at Bass Pro. There's a step that families have to take first in order to come see Santa this time around. Yes, so you can have free reservations. They are free. They are completely online this year. Um, that means you can register in home. You, there's no need to come to the store. Um, the website is gonna be BassProShops.com forward slash Santa. Um, you'll just go on there. The available time slots will be listed. Um, from there, you'll just make your reservation. How many people are going to be here? So on and so forth. Yeah. And then the other thing that we want to point out, you might see a little reflection, and that's because Santa is staying safe. What is the big change this year that families will notice? Will the kids be able to sit on Santa's lap this year? Um, not this year. Santa is going to be visiting from afar. So you can actually come right up and sit on the bench right next to Santa. Um, tell him your wish list, whatever need be. Um, after the kids do exit at, between each family, we will have a Santa's helper come by and sanitize the bench for you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And we're actually going to stick around because Santa, I want to tell you my list. I'm going to be telling you my list in the next half hour. Are you ready? I'm ready. Can we give them a preview if I'm on the nice or the naughty list? Oh, well, you know, it was close, but you managed to come in on the nice side. On the nice list, you guys. So I'm just going to take my seat here. Remember, reservations are required, so stick around because Santa's going to hear my list in a bit. You guys, back to you.
Thank you so much, Alicia. All right, well, it is 66 degrees out there. Not feeling much like Christmas time. Not at all. It's <laughs> muggy and it's gray outside. I got a time lapse for you. Show you these clouds. Uh, that are really starting to thicken up a bit and we are seeing a few sprinkles even there on the camera on the live cam itself. 66 degrees at the airport in San Antonio. Calm winds and dew points are high as well. So I want to show you the radar because we are actually seeing a few light returns on the radar generally to the west of San Antonio. You can see these streamer showers, very light rain from Lakey to Ya Valley along a 83 along Highway 90 out toward Hondo and Savinal. Again, just these streaky streams showers here, very light sprinkles. Uh, it's not going to amount to anything that's going to put a dent in our drought, unfortunately. And it's pretty warm to start the day. Now it's not ridiculously warm outside, uh, but it is warm for a start of a November day. 66 in, at the airport, 64 Bulverde, 65 in Canyon Lake, 68 in New Braunfels, 65 at Rio Medina, 67 in Hondo, 64 in Tarpley, and 62 in Lost Maples. The one thing you'll notice uh, as you step outside today is the mugginess in the air. This is our humidity tracker. You can see that dew points are in the 60s. That's pretty high on a humidity scale, especially for November. Usually in November we get uh, pretty strong cool fronts that help to keep things dry. That is not the case today. And in the future cast, what you'll notice as I put this in play is that these clouds are going to be stubborn. We're going to hang on to clouds through the early afternoon. Now into the later afternoon, we'll see plenty of sunshine. But because of the cloudy start, we're going to have a hard time warming up today. We're at 66 degrees. I think we'll only get up to about 77 for the high in San Antonio and up in the hill country as well near Kerrville. A little bit warmer out toward New Braunfels, Gonzales, Pleasanton and Yavaldi because the clouds are going to clear from the outside in. And so the areas in the fringes around San Antonio are going to be a little bit warmer. 84 for the high in Carrizo Springs, near 90 degrees down in Laredo, 83 in Eagle Pass. So if we didn't have these clouds in San Antonio st to start the day, we'd probably be well into the 80s in the afternoon. So at 10, we'll still be cloudy, 68 degrees. At noon, we'll be muggy and cloudy, 72 degrees. 77 for that high will be partly cloudy into the evening as well will be partly cloudy. South, southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, so not too breezy. Let's transition into talking what the week ahead is going to have in store for the weather. As you look at the national weather pattern, one thing really screams out at you, right? All the snow across the Rockies and points west. Now, this is around a low pressure system, and behind this low pressure system, we do have a cool front. But this is a Pacific cold front. It's bringing in cooler Pacific air, not that frigid cold Arctic air that we see sometimes from Canada and the Arctic. And so this is not going to have a major impact on our temperatures here in San Antonio. It's going to be a weak front. And so looking at the work week ahead, as you can see, tomorrow's going to be a warm one. We'll start off with some clouds and some drizzle, and then in the afternoon, 80 degrees. That front will arrive on Tuesday. Our high is only going to be 78. It's only going to drop by 2 degrees. It's not a very strong cold front. The one thing that you'll notice is that it'll feel nice and cool on Wednesday morning, even a little chilly. Wednesday is, of course, Veterans Day. Veterans Day itself is going to be beautiful. This weak cool front sets up a bit of a quick burst of drier air, and so it's going to make Wednesday feel amazing. But for the rest of the week, that moisture is going to return pretty quickly uh, by the weekend. And, you know, it's just a little depressing to not see very much of a chance for rain on that seven day forecast with that front arriving on Tuesday. Maybe just a stray shower. That's it. And then these sprinkles that we're seeing out there. So unfortunately, no real rain in the next seven days. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Maybe in the next 10 to 15 days. Jealous of that snow you showed up. I know. North Wouldn't that be country. nice? We were talking about no, Santa. We're talking about Santa. It was all right, thank you, Sarah. 822, 66 degrees out. Well, looking into how one of the world's most common drinks originated. After mm. the break, we'll tell you some fun facts about cappuccinos on its national day. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. If you need that extra boost of caffeine today, you're in luck because it's National Cappuccino Day. I know, I've had like two cups of coffee, so I'm feeling it. And the word cappuccino 
comes from the, okay, I'm going to butcher Capuchin this. friars. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's an order of friars in the Catholic Church that wore hooded robes. Mm. The frothy milk that caps the coffee resembles a hood. Cappuccinos are typically made with one or two shots of espresso and hot milk that is steamed into a light foam. Historians mm. say the modern cappuccino was created in 1945 when Achille Gagliano I don't know how we'll to say it. Gagia. Gagia invented the espresso machine. All right, so I'm not going to lie. I had no idea what a cappuccino was until about seven seconds ago. So really? For that. I, ah. I know espresso and I know black coffee. I literally, if I ever go anywhere other than the station to get coffee, black coffee. I pretty much, that's what I drink every morning. Cappuccino? I have, I, you. Yeah, I have a little fancy, fancy. Little fancy machine at home. Oh, okay. What about you, Spivey? Cappuccinos. And okay. wait, so you're saying you have never heard of a cappuccino? No, no, I've heard of it. I just didn't know what it was. Yeah. What? Because then, okay. then you have all like, you know, the Americana with the water, not the milk. I, yeah. see, I, see, I, see. I just need the caffeine. All right, 827, 66 degrees out. Still ahead in our next half hour, President-elect Joe Biden vows to deal with a divided nation. The latest in the 2020 election as President Donald Trump continues to oppose the results of the vote. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. 8.30 this morning, Sunday, November 8th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. It is 67, we're moving on up. I'm actually feeling warm today. A little bit. I know. A little I, bit. I mean, it's, oh, it's, it's the humidity that's doing that. It's seeping it into our studio. Yeah. Now, we were showing earlier Santa Claus at the Bass Pro Shop, so I thought we would talk about when our first freeze is. <laughs> okay, so on average, our first freeze in San Antonio is November 30th. We don't have any freeze in sight over the next seven days, so we don't have to worry about covering up those plants or anything like that. But something to keep in mind is that the Hill Country starts to see their earliest freeze by now. There have been some very light freezes up near Kerrville, Rock Springs, and uh, out near Comfort earlier, meaning that it got down to 32 degrees for about an hour or so, and that's it. The earliest freeze in San Antonio actually occurred on October 30th, 1917. So we won't be seeing the earliest freeze of the season. Now, temperatures this morning far from freezing. It's 67 in San Antonio, 66 at JBSA Randolph, 67 in New Braunfels, 67 at Port SA, 65 at Rio Medina, and 62 in Kerrville. As you can see, it is completely cloudy out there, and we've actually got some sprinkles out there as well. Sprinkles difficult to see on the radar, but if you look out to the west, you can see a few streamer showers here just near Lakey, right along uh, Highway 83 there, and out toward Hondo as well. So this cloud deck is going to stick around a bit and it's going to make for uh, an interesting forecast today. Temperatures should be on the cooler side in the afternoon than they were yesterday, but it's going to be muggy. So coming up, I'll have the rest of your Sunday forecast. We'll also talk about the tropics. Tropical Storm Ada impacting Cuba right now. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We are following the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County. Metro health officials reported there are 238 new cases of the virus in our area. This brings the total to 67,365 cases since the pandemic started. Fortunately, there were no new deaths. Meanwhile, 261 people remain in the hospital. 107 of those people are in the ICU and 39 are in ventilators. There are 12% of staff beds available and 68% of ventilators available. And when it comes to the Lone Star State, taking a macro perspective, we are up to 7,677 cases. The total number of cases now standing at 950,549 since this pandemic hit us. Now, there are 6,068 people in Texas hospitals, 111 additional deaths for a total of 18,700 people who died. Now, there have been 811,330 people who did recover from this virus. Well, Joe Biden said to become the 46th president of the United States. Kamala Harris will become the first woman to become vice president. Biden and Harris celebrating victory in Wilmington, Delaware, as President Trump continues to dispute the results of the vote. That's right. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest. The president-elect of the United States of America, Joe Biden. President-elect Joe Biden pledging to heal a divided nation after a bitter and historic election. I'll work as hard for those who didn't vote for me as those who did. 
After more than four decades in public office, Biden reveling in the moment and sharing the spotlight with Kamala Harris, who makes history as the first woman, first black person, and first American of South Asian descent to be elected vice president. But while I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last. Because every little girl watching tonight sees that this is a country of possibilities. A record more than 74 million Americans voted for the Biden ticket, and after days of anticipation while ballots were tallied, many crowded the streets across the country to celebrate victory. <laughs> president Trump's supporters also gathering, echoing the president's false claims that the election is being stolen. The president has yet to concede as his campaign vows more legal action contesting the results. Top Republican lawmakers silent after Biden's win. Still, the president-elect promising to reach across party lines and to get to work on an agenda that starts with fighting the pandemic. Americans have called upon us to marshal the forces of decency, the forces of fairness, to marshal the forces of science and the forces of hope in the great battles of our time. Sources tell ABC News President-elect Biden plans to sign a series of executive orders once he takes office that would reverse some of President Trump's policies, like rejoining the Paris Climate Accords and the World Health Organization. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Well, you have a chance to support a nonprofit in our community by making donations to help fill stockings. That's right. It's all part of our KSAC Community Initiative, and we are partnering up with a local nonprofit, SA Youth, for its Stuff Stocking Holiday Drive. As far as donation goes, they're looking for small toys, arts and craft supplies, and healthy snacks. You can even give monetary donations. A $25 donation will cover the cost of one holiday stocking. You can donate between now and December 18th. SA Youth is hoping to spread a little holiday cheer to 650 students this year. Right now on KSACcommunity.com, we have a full list of items they need and a link for you to donate. And speaking of stockings, we've got some good news. San Antonio made the cut. That's right. Santa is kicking off this year's Christmas celebrations here this afternoon at Bass Pro Shop near the Rim. But how is your visit with Santa going to look a little different because, you know, the whole pandemic? Yeah, our Alicia Moretta is live from Santa's Wonderland. Alicia, what's, what's going on over there? Good morning. A lot of fun, a lot of Christmas cheer. Yes, it's November, but it's never too early for Christmas, for the holidays, and of course for Santa. He's standing by because I'm going to share my list, but we want to start with Anna White. She's a special events coordinator again here at Bass Pro. Anna, first thing that people need to do if they want to come is to register online. Until when do they have an opportunity to do so? All right, so reservations do open six days in advance. Um, they are able to register up until Christmas, um, but that is six days in advance. So um, the registration is free. It's going to be at BassProShops.com forward slash Santa. Um, and then from there, you have your reservation. You'll be texted um, when your arrival is expected. And then another thing that you mentioned, there's not any like kit crafts here, but one thing that the kids get to take home and do is write a letter to Santa like I have here. Yes, so we do have letters to Santa for them to take home. They can also come back and mail it. Um, they will get a reply from the North Pole around February. Um, so yeah, so exciting. And I think I'm ready to tell him what I want because he said that I've been a good girl. I'm on the nice list. Santa, okay, for Christmas, I would really like a clothes steamer. Do you think you and your elves can make that happen? Oh, of course we can make that happen, Alicia, but it's up to you, dear. Remember, I'm watching. And I'm always behaving, Santa, I promise you. So again, you guys, this is such a fun activity for the kids. Remember that they'll have to take a seat here. They'll snap the picture. One to two pictures is included for free to make your memory with Santa this year. Reporting live from the Bass Pro Shops, Alicia Barrera, Quesa, 12 News. All right, thank you so much, Alicia. Time now is 8.39, 67 degrees out. And we are here, it is Sunday. We are here to talk about football, Cowboys play, Texans play. We have a lot to talk about. We have some linebackers who are out. We have a quarterback contest that is unfolding before our eyes. We even have a coach who might be on the hot seat. Wonder if they'll be writing letters to Santa as well. Cowboys? Yeah, <laughs> both teams. Open for, for less injuries. All right, taking a look outside with live cam. Looks pretty dreary out there. Sarah Spivey will let you know if and when these clouds will clear up. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. 8.43 this morning, 67 degrees. Feels like spring. 
Yeah, it really does because of the humidity too. Humidity and mugginess are making it feel like it should rain outside, right? Well, it's just not. Other than a few sprinkles out there, we're not going to see any beneficial rain. We just don't have the upper level support to produce any uh, heavy rainfall at the moment. I'm showing you radar because if you look to the west, you can see a few returns here moving from south to north. Very streaky in nature out near Lakey, out near Hondo, Medina Lake probably getting some sprinkles as well. I've been looking carefully on the live cam, which has been glitching this morning, but the live cam has shown times of sprinkles. And when you look at the visibility, visibility is lowered in some places as well. Now we're not dealing with dense fog, but we are dealing with low clouds in many areas. The ceiling or the height of the clouds above the ground is about a thousand feet right now, and that's pretty low to the ground. Uh, and so we're going to continue to see these low clouds hang around through a good portion of the day today, and that's going to keep temperatures from soaring too high. In fact, right now it's 67 degrees, which is warm for a start in November day, but we're going to coast in the upper 60s into low 70s through the lunch hour. Honestly, 68. Wake up temperature in New Braunfels, 68 in Gonzales. It's already 70 degrees in Del Rio, 71 in Catula, and 72 in Laredo. It's going to be warm today in Del Rio, Catula, and in Laredo, well into the 80s and even close to 90 degrees down near Laredo. Meanwhile, it's 63 in the Hill Country in Kerrville. Showing you the future cast to show you what I mean by the stubborn clouds. We'll really only start to see some sunshine until 1, 2 p.m., and then we only have about an hour or so of daytime heating left. Uh, because remember, the afternoon high comes now around 3, 4 p.m. So looking at the uh, afternoon neighborhood temperatures, a high temperature probably a couple of degrees cooler than yesterday. Yesterday we got up to 80 degrees. We'll be at about 77 around downtown San Antonio, 77 the Stone Oak and Timberwood Park area, 77 up near Bernie, 79 Lake Hills, 80 in Seguin, 81 in Lavernia. So again, seeing clouds until the afternoon, then we'll be partly cloudy. South southeast winds at 5 to 10. We'll have clear skies for a part of the night, and then clouds will return by midnight. Told you we would talk about Tropical Storm Ada, which is currently spinning over Cuba with winds sustained at 60 miles per hour. It's expected to strengthen a little bit, but may stay below hurricane status, move into the Gulf of Mexico, and then bring a good amount of rain to uh, parts of Florida. But here in Texas and in San Antonio, very little to no rainfall over the next seven days. We do have one thing I want to talk about that's going to add a subtle change to our weather pattern. It's a weak cool front that's producing a lot of snow across the upper Rockies, but this cool front isn't really going to pack much of a punch. In fact, it's really only going to drop our temperatures slightly. We'll have some fog. Uh, tomorrow morning and then this front will arrive on Tuesday, only bringing a 10% chance for a stray shower. Uh, so not really any significant rain, but at least that front sets up a beautiful Veterans Day. All right, Sarah, thank you so much. Well, in the last half hour of a GMSA, we heard from the Republican Party, the chair of the Texas party following Joe Biden winning the presidential election. Now it's time to hear from the other side of the aisle. Well, joining us in today's leading essay segment is Carla Braley, the vice chair of the Texas Democratic Party. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Braley. So Joe Biden has been called the winner of the Electoral College votes, thus projected president-elect. So what is your reaction? What does that mean for the state of Texas? Well, I'm absolutely elated. Let me just start off by saying to be able to be a servant leader um, at such a time as this, um, we've had some difficult times in our country, reminders of where we need to go to experience democracy. And I'm a graduate of Howard University, uh, the uh, school that produced Kamala Harris. So I'm absolutely elated as a black woman uh, to see a black woman be selected as vice president um, elect just means so much while we haven't shattered the glass ceiling because we still have work to do. We have definitely broken that ceiling. And so I'm absolutely lady. What it means for Texas. Uh, Texas has made several gains. Uh, we've heard all this year that Texas is the biggest battleground state. And we now know that Texas is a seriously uh, a serious state that's moving forward that is not red. I think, you know, one could argue that we're purple, but we had some gains um, all across the state of Texas. Did not get exactly what we wanted in terms of a blue wave, but we made sure uh, that things were changed locally, 
lots of different elected officials, um, Democratic elected officials happen across the state of Texas. If you look at what happened in Harris County uh, to show the innovation, the creativity uh, uh, given and providing access to people for voting, uh, we, we made some some gains. And I think what you're going to see is that the leadership modeled uh, in our upcoming White House is going to spread across our nation, including Texas. So definitely looking forward to, to that. And Chairwoman, Texas Democrats we spoke with were optimistic about Gina Ortiz Jones and MJ Hagar. What happened from your perspective in those two races? Well, I mean, um, you know, we can see that right now, Texas just was not quite ready to take that leap, one. Uh, why? I think that we still have some work to do in the rural areas, uh, suburban areas. You see that in the urban areas, we, we move forward tremendously across the board with our Democratic candidates. But I think, you know, um, one can argue that Unfortunately, I think we may have underestimated uh, the impact that Trump has had on so many voters. Uh, it shows that we, you know, have we have a long way to go in terms of how we move forward away in dismantling systemic oppression and how we embrace that. And I think we, you know, we talk a lot about Trump, but the bottom line is there there are many voters who align themselves. Uh, with the type of rhetoric that he has embraced over these four years. Um, and the bottom line, you know, we need a leader that is willing to cross both aisles and and be the president for for all people in the United States. And I think you'll see that with this administration, I really believe that will even help Texas to continue to move forward, particularly when uh, people are impact across the board. We're getting a fair shot with education and health care. Those are things that I think, you know, at the end of the day, I've said this over and over. It's really not about either one of these parties. We align ourselves with them, but it really is about people, meeting people where they are, serving um, serving people, and, and, and at the end of the day, asking for the, their vote. And you're going to see that engagement happen even more across the state of Texas. All right, Dr. Bradley, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate you jumping on. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. Pro football coverage. Powered All right, shift the gears a little bit. We are here to talk about football. It is Sunday. We have two big games. We have Dallas hosting the Pittsburgh Steelers, the best team on record this afternoon, 325. And then heading to Houston, Texans scheduled to play in Jacksonville today at noon. A lot of questions for both teams. Not ideal seasons. Hopefully they can both pick them up. And time now is 8.51, 67 degrees out. And what do kids ages 3 to 5 need to be to be healthy and ready for school? Tomorrow on GMSA, tips that parents of preschoolers will want to know. In your news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police are searching for the driver who hit a man with his car overnight. According to SAPD, the 54-year-old victim was walking along the westbound side of Austin Highway near Perrin Bidal when the driver veered off the road and hit him. Police say the victim was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. The driver responsible remains at large. It's 68 and cloudy outside right now. Winds are from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. We have yet to get the pollen count in, but I'll be sure to put that on our social media platforms and, of course, online at ksat.com. Temperatures are going to coast in the upper 60s and low 70s through noon. We'll see more sunshine in the afternoon. 77 for the high. Southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then we get a weak cool front on Tuesday. It's not going to do much. Not going to bring us rain and not even going to cool us down too much. So pretty quiet weather week ahead. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend. Have a good Sunday.